He and hundreds of others had gone to Porton, thinking they were helping research into a cure for the common cold. Some thought they were taking part in physiological tests. I was told it was uh, common cold research, and so I volunteered. Uh, I was a medic. I was working in a, an RAF hospital. I thought that uh, common cold research was a worthwhile thing to do. Uh, and there were two other incentives, which obviously were, were, were worthwhile at the time. They offered an extra two shillings a day, which seems ludicrous by today's standards. And, of course, a weekend pass, a chance to get home and see the girlfriend. A second inquest into Madison's death has just concluded, over 50 years since he died. It recorded a verdict of unlawful killing. Those veterans who survived today, including ex-serviceman Ken Earl, claim their health has been affected by the tests carried out at Porton Down. In my early 30s, I was diagnosed as having ankylosing spondylitis, which is a, uh, uh, an affliction of the spine. I have two areas of my spine that are seized up. Generally, I think that, that, that the uh, experiment with sarin has affected my nervous and immune system. I think today people are more aware of biological warfare. In the past it was always sort of a, a scary thing that was kept out of the way because nuclear um, annihilation was, was probably more on people's minds than, than biological warfare. Nowadays, because we know that biological warfare is cheap, people are more educated, we understand it, it's cheap, um, it, it's easier to do. I'm not going to say it's easy to do, but it's easier to do than, say, nuclear warfare or even chemical warfare. Um, it is on people's minds, yes, but it's always been there. That danger has always been there. Well, I think the, the, the threat of the very large release, the, the, the hundreds of gallons um, from an aeroplane, probably is um, pretty low. Um, because that that was very much the nation state that was the, the Russia particularly producing huge huge amounts of, of of many BW agents. We're now talking very much more about about small releases. I I don't know how you evaluate a risk. I think there is a risk. I think it's probably over exaggerated in America. I suspect the 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 risks here are, are, are judged in in a, in a slightly more rational and, and and calm way than in the states. I think there is a risk. Um, I wouldn't like to say what the risk was, but I think the risk is mainly of, of fairly small-scale releases of, of, of some of these uh, some of these BW agents. Whatever the risk today, those in power have changed the way they deal with secret documents. As we've seen from papers released after 30 years, what goes on behind closed doors is often very different from what the public is told. Actually, one of the recent innovations uh, in government has been post-it notes. These are regarded as incredibly valuable by those in government because you can have the document, you can stick a post-it on, and the job of the person who receives the document is to read the post-it and bin it. Porton Down continues to contribute to the defence of Britain today, just as it did during the Cold War. We'll have to wait 30 years before getting any clue as to what it's involved in now. No one would argue against the need for a degree of secrecy, but how much access should the public have to information about the workings of the state? In the interest of national security, for you and for me, it is necessary to keep a small amount of MRE's defence work secret. No work is undertaken on the development of munitions for the spreading of diseases. The research is limited to that necessary to enable an effective means of defence to be devised.